In this clip, we're going to have a look uh, at surds. Now, very briefly, what is a surd? Well, I think the best way of, um, of explaining it is through an example. So if I said to you, what's the square root of 4? You'd tell me the answer is 2. Um, and if I said, what's the square root of 2? And you started to work that out. Uh, on my calculator, I got 1.4142.1356, and then it keeps going, and it keeps going to infinity. So it doesn't terminate as a decimal, and it doesn't recur. Um, and that's actually called an irrational number. And that's, that's simple. That's all it is. That's what a surd is, okay? Now, what we need to do, though, is, is to understand how to manipulate surds, uh, and that's what we're now going to have a look at. So we're going to think particularly about multiplication and there are some key elements that it's important for us um, to, to have in the back of our mind. So first point really, example number one, is quite simply if I said root 2 multiplied by root 3, the answer, we simply multiply those two numbers together and it gives us root 6. Okay, uh, the next example, um, sometimes you might find that as a question, what's root A multiplied by root B? Using the principle that we've just learnt there, you're going to say to me, the answer is root AB, and you'd be correct. Now, this is an interesting one, just have a look at this, because this is really important to us. If I said to you, what's root 9 multiplied by root 9? You'd be right in saying, using our principles that we've learned so far, that it's root 81. Now, you can tell me something here, can't you? You can say that root 81, I know what the square root of 81 is, actually it's 9. So can you see what happens here? If you have a, a root of, of number and multiply it by a root of the same number, it actually has the, the effect of removing the two root signs. So we get to root 81, so the answer is 9. Now again, using our understanding of this, if I then said to you, what is root A multiplied by root A, what's the answer? Remember, when it's the same, it removes the root, so actually the answer would be A. And that's going to be really important to us as we move on and it gets a bit more, a bit more complicated. I want you to really try hard to remember that. Now, let's have a look at the next example. Now, this is another interesting one, particularly when we come, still thinking about multiplication, but we're thinking about what's going to happen when we, um, when we simplify. Now, so let's have a look. We'll call this example number five, and I've got root two multiplied by root ten. Now, again, we know what the answer is going to be, it's root 20, but we can't leave it there this time um, because we can actually simplify root 20. Now, how do we do it? Well, we've got to look, we've got to look for square numbers. In other words, let me show you. So if I had root 20, I could actually write it like this, couldn't I? I could write it as root 4 times by root 5. Now, why have I written it like that? Because I'm looking for a square number. Now in 20, 4 multiplied by 5, 4 we know is a square, a square number. So actually, when we, uh, when we simplify it, what we do is we work out the square root of 4, which is 2, we put that on the, oops, sorry, we put that on the outside of the root here, so actually it simplifies to, to 2 root 5, okay? Right, one last example. Let's just say we were looking at example something like this. So this time it would be root 2 times by root, nine, uh, root 18 times by root 5. Now, what we could do, we could multiply out all those together. It gets a bit of a, a big sum. We could do that. There's a more straightforward way of doing it. I want you to think about square numbers. Can you see Can you see the potential for a square number in there? And yes, you can. We've got root two. Now that can be expressed like this, can't it? Root nine times by root two times by root five. Can you see what we've done? We've broken 18 down 
into nine and two. Now, there's something else that we can spot here, okay? Can you see I've got a root two and a root two, okay? Now, what does it allow me to do? Root two times root two, well, that gets rid of the root, doesn't it? So I end up with two. Now, when I think about here, what's root nine? It's three. And then I've still got my root five. So to simplify this answer, I multiply those two together, keep it on the outside, which gives me the answer of six root five. We'll stop it there.